Today I'm going to the Wichita State University in Wichita, Kansas. On October 2, 1970, the Wichita State football team took off from this airport here. They were flying in two Martin 404 airplanes, like this one here, and the planes were named the Gold Plane and the Black Plane. They were carrying the Wichita State University football team, whose colors were gold and black. The Gold Plane was carrying the starting players. The Black Plane was carrying the backup players. Their first stop was Stapleton Airport in Denver, Colorado. Today the only thing left of the airport is a control tower, which you can see right here. If I go down to street view, you can see what's left of the airport. The property is covered by private housing and commercial properties. If we exit street view, and we go back in history, you can see what the airport used to look like. Right here. Now for both airplanes, the flight crews were provided by Golden Eagle Aviation Incorporated. The president of Golden Eagle Aviation was Ronald G. Skipper. He was also the co-pilot or the first officer of the gold plane. The captain of the gold plane was Danny E. Crocker. While they were in the air on the way to Denver, the president of Golden Eagle Aviation, Ronald Skipper, who was also the co-pilot, was visiting with passengers in the cabin and advising them that they would be taking the scenic route over the Rockies on the way to Logan, Utah. While both planes were at Denver's Stapleton Airport, they were both serviced with fuel and oil. And while they were being serviced in Stapleton, Ronald Skipper exited the plane to purchase an aeronautical section chart of the scenic route over the Rockies, but he failed to study it before takeoff. Also, being the president of Golden Eagle Aviation, Skipper made this decision without discussing it with Captain Crocker. Even though Captain Crocker was the captain, Ronald Skipper was still his boss and signed his checks. After being serviced, they took off on runway 35 left, which is this runway right, right here. So here I am standing right here at the old control tower at Stapleton Airport where they took off. I'm kind of standing facing south, runway 35 left that they took off on would have been right over here, about where the road is, roughly, in this general area. And they would have taken off going that way for a few miles and then made a gradual left turn and headed toward Loveland Pass. They flew north for several miles before they turned left or west and then started making their way toward the Loveland Pass, right up through here. As they were flying up the canyon through the Rockies, witnesses said the plane seemed to be flying lower than usual and the engines sounded normal. One witness, who was a World War II multi-engine pilot, said the engines seemed to be throttled back while the plane was 500 to 1,000 feet above the terrain. So it appears that Skipper, who was the president of Golden Eagle Aviation, was doing everything he could to impress his clients. They flew up this canyon, following the highway. People at Georgetown said 
They looked pretty low, maybe 500 to 1,000 feet. The engines seemed to be cruising. They didn't seem to be working very hard, but seemed to be cruising. They continued on up through the canyon, and as they went further up the canyon, witnesses said that the peaks of the mountains were above the airplane. Because they didn't study the aeronautical sectional charts before they left, they were not familiar with the terrain. Had they studied the sectional charts, they would have known that there was a certain point where they would have been too low to clear the Loveland Pass right here, which is called the Continental Divide in the Rocky Mountains, sits at 11,990 feet or 3,655 meters. As they came up the canyon through here, everything was fine. When they made this turn right through here, they realized that there was no way out, they couldn't turn around, and they were too low to clear the Continental Divide. They were about a thousand feet too low, which is about 300 meters too low. Ronald Skipper, the president of Golden Eagle Aviation, put the airplane in a right-hand turn. I'm going to go back to modern day. So he put the airplane in a right-hand turn approximately in here. For unknown reasons, Captain Crocker said, I'll take it. He took control of the airplane and put it back into a left-hand turn approximately in here. Survivors on board said the left-hand turn was extremely steep. The plane started to shake, then it stalled, and began to hit the trees. And it began to strike the trees right about in here and crash in this clear area right here. So the plane came from that direction right here, started clipping the trees, and crashed pretty much right here where I'm standing. There's debris all over the side of this hill. Actually, all, all over the side of this mountain. The left. This is the left main landing gear. Up over here, you have the, the nose landing gear. And right here, you have the right main landing gear. coordinates for the crash site are right here. I'll put the coordinates for all locations in the description below. But the airplane was first making a right turn this way. Captain Crocker took over, put it into a left turn, very steep left turn. The plane stalled, began to hit the tops of the trees right here and crashed going in this direction right here. There were 40 people on board. In the end, 31 of them would lose their life. Nine of them would survive. In the National Transportation Safety Board's final report, it said there was probably going to be more survivors, but the plane caught on fire. And according to their report, the plane did not catch on fire until after rescue workers reached the site. So in my opinion, the cause of the crash was a stall. Why did they stall? Because they were in a very, very steep left-hand turn. Why were they in a very steep left-hand turn? Because 
they didn't plan properly, and they got themselves stuck in a canyon. Now, why would that happen? In my opinion, it's because Ronald Skipper, the president of Golden Eagle Aviation, was doing everything he could to impress his clients from Wichita State University and was basically showing off. Had he put flying as the number one priority instead of trying to impress his clients, there is a 100% chance they never would have struck the ridge. Now back at Denver, the black plane followed the pre-planned route where they flew north before they headed west to Logan, Utah. Had the gold plane done the same thing, this never would have happened. The black plane finally did land over here in Logan, Utah. And upon landing, they caught word that the gold plane had crashed in the Rocky Mountains. So there you have it. The Wichita State University football team airplane crash right here on the Forrest Haggerty channel.